The paintings in this room are from the Siegfried Saga. These scenes are from the Siegfried Saga. The paintings in this room The closed door leads to the tower, which is not part of the tour. The king was making his way to this very door when he was arrested in 1886. I wonder why Ludwig was going to the tower the night he was arrested. The richly carved bed, with its canopy, resembles a Gothic building and its turrets. The bed's draperies were handmade by dozens of Bavarian seamstresses. Did they have... Maybe Ludwig thought... Scenes from the opera Tristan and Isolde. Scenes from the opera. It's a beautiful. The stained glass window depicts St. Louis receiving the last sacraments. The paintings above the altar depict St. Louis surrounded by the seraphim. An interesting side note. For a period of about a year, the Louis images in all three castles were ordered to be covered up with black cloth on the unfathomable whim of the king. A king saint? A king? The Miracle of the Grail These linens look so I'm surprised. I can almost picture Ludwig in here. I wonder what he really dreamt about in this room. The study paintings depict scenes from the Tannhäuser Saga in the Wartburg Castle. The study paintings depict scenes from the Tannhäuser Saga in the Wartburg Castle. I don't.
the study painting. This is the final room of our tour, the Singer's Hall. It was modeled after the Singer's Hall of the Wartburg Castle, where minstrel competitions were held in the 13th century. The hall was built for small private concerts, but Ludwig himself never gave one here. It is said that during the last few years of Wagner's life, he came to Neuschwanstein frequently and performed for the king alone in this room. The hall is probably best known for its enigmatic wolf paintings. The original paintings were from the Parsifal saga, but in 1882, Ludwig had them replaced, supplying the description and titles of the new paintings himself. While all the other rooms in the castle show scenes from Wagner's operas, the scenes in this room are not from any opera that anyone can identify. It is yet another of the many mysteries associated with the life of the fairy tale king. The hunters track down Engelhardt and Hildegunde. Hildegunde's imprisonment. The wedding feast of Hildegunde and the Baron. The death of Engelhardt. Engelhardt courts Hildegunde. Engelhardt and the blacksmith. There must be a story behind these wolf paintings, but what story? Hildegunde's imprisonment. Nice view of the Alps. I can't see the displays until I've gotten past the counter. I can't see the Guten Tag. Guten Tag. Ich hätte gern eine Eintrittskarte für das Museum. Ja, 8 Mark für eine Ganztagskarte. So. Danke. Bitte. Ticket to the Ludwig Museum.
July 3rd, 1863. Elizabeth, you can have no idea, dear cousin, how happy you made me. The hours recently passed with you in the railway carriage I consider among the happiest in my life. Never will their memory fade. You gave me permission to visit you at Ischel. If the time comes for this ardent hope to be fulfilled, I shall be of all men upon earth the most blessed. The feelings of sincere love and reverence and faithful attachment to you, which I cherished in my heart even as a boy, makes me imagine heaven upon earth and will be extinguished by death alone. I beg you with all my heart to forgive the contents of this letter, but I could not help myself. Ludwig Elizabeth frequently gave Ludwig advice on royal conduct, hoping to protect him from unfavorable public opinion. March 1st, 1865. My dearest Eagle, you have not written me in a few months. I have missed you. I often try to imagine what you are doing. I hear tales that you have been on retreat and have not been seen in Munich for some time. I suspect it is this new friend you wrote up so mysteriously that takes you away from home. I hope you are enjoying yourself, my beloved, but I beg you to caution. The people need to see you at the throne. I also hesitate to suggest that what your officials do in your absence may not always be in your own best interest. You have always been a true king, but you must let the people see you to ensure that they don't forget that. E. Your Dove Ludwig's friends were concerned for his mental state long before his arrest. June 14, 1878. My beloved Eagle, in your last letter you spoke so movingly of your torment that I was moved to tears. What is this torment? Why won't you confess to me what is truly troubling you? You must know that I would never despise you no matter how horrible you believe your sins to be. Please do not write such barbs to my heart by even suggesting such things. If you do not wish to confess to me, at least tell me how I can aid you. I am always your true one, your dove. In this letter, dated November 1886, Elizabeth of Austria thanks Bishop Frank for his assistance in helping her fulfill Ludwig's last wishes. She writes that she knows it was an unusual request but she believes Ludwig had reasons of his own for wishing it to be done. She hopes that his spirit finds peace at last. No further reference to this letter has ever been found. One can only speculate what the last wishes of a cornered and embattled Ludwig might have been. What were his last wishes? This place is giving me more questions than answers. She's beautiful. One of Ludwig's few close friends was Empress Elizabeth of Austria. She was a distant cousin of the boy prince and he saw her often growing up. Graceful and beautiful, Elizabeth seemed to represent the feminine ideal to the younger Ludwig. Their friendship continued after her marriage, mainly by correspondence. She remained a source of for Ludwig throughout his life. In keeping with Ludwig's love of romance and drama, he called her the Dove, and he to her was the Eagle. Ludwig is Prince Charming. He played the part well. Looks like it weighs a ton. Ludwig's Grand Master Wardrobe from the Knights of St. George. He 
He looks so regal. Why would he give up all of this pageantry and become a recluse? Ludwig is Grand Master of the Knights of St. George. The Knights of St. George was an aristocratic society dedicated to the acts of chivalry. Ludwig loved the medieval pageantry of the order in his early years before his increasing reclusiveness drove him to abandon public appearances. I wonder if these pins have any symbolic meaning. I wonder Signets and sash pins from the Order of the Knights of St. George. These were worn on Ludwig's uniform, as befitted his rank of Grand Master. They are now the property of the Bavarian Crown Treasury. Ludwig and Wagner. Ludwig loved the opera of his contemporary Richard Wagner. He helped support Wagner's music through much of his life. Ludwig considered Wagner a close friend, often calling him the Great Friend. Wagner encouraged this infatuation, some believe, for personal gain. Typical artist. Even after Wagner's death, Ludwig still showed signs of obsession with the composer. This letter, written in 1882 by Ludwig to the conductor of the Munich Opera, instructs the conductor to make preparations for a new Wagner opera. The conductor went to see the king as instructed. When he arrived, Ludwig was ill and refused to see him. Nothing further was ever heard of this mysterious new opera. Was it a figment of an ill man's desperate wishes? Hmm. Ludwig is offered a crown of laurels by the genius of immortal fame. 26 July, 1874. By the power of the lily, we shall have the strength to resist all temptations throughout the whole year. 26 July, 1875. Solemn oath before the picture of the great king. Refrain for three months from all excitement. This oath has its binding power as well as its potency by De Par Le Roy, LNR, DPLR. What excitement! I need to see more of that diary! Guten Tag. Guten Tag. Is das the Ludwig Museum? Ja, ja. Ludwig der Zweite von Bayern. Im Museum es einen Brief von Ludwig über eine neue Wagneroper. Ja, ja, ich kenne diesen Brief. Wo kann ich äh, mehr von dieser Wagneroper sehen? Ja, ich weiß nichts über Wagner. Das hier ist kein Wagner-Museum. Ja, ich weiß. In Bayreuth befindet sich ein Wagner-Museum. Versuchen Sie es halt doch, ne? Bei right. Danke. They certainly make an incredible looking couple. They certainly make an incredible looking couple. They certainly
June 7, 1886, a group of men arrive at Neuschwanstein Castle demanding to take the king in custody. With them is Dr. Gudin, the doctor who had been in charge of Otto, the king's mentally ill brother. The men have an order for the king's arrest on the grounds of insanity. They are refused admittance by a brave group of farmers and local soldiers who have come to Ludwig's aid. They are forced to retreat to nearby Hohenschwangau. This is the first Ludwig hears of the conspiracy. Ludwig composes a pamphlet explaining the subversive acts of the conspirators and eloquently pleading with his people for aid. The pamphlet is smuggled out of Neuschwanstein and printed, but the pamphlets are seized before they can be distributed. June 12, 1886, Ludwig knows the conspirators will return. He despairs. He asks his servant for the keys to the tower. The servant, fearing the king intends suicide, says the key is lost. Unbeknownst to Ludwig, the conspirators arrive at the castle. This time, there is no one to stop them. Ludwig is lured from his bedroom to the entry hall of Neuschwanstein on pretense. There, he is taken into custody. Ludwig is taken by carriage from Neuschwanstein to Berg, where his brother Otto had long been imprisoned. This is a great blow to the king's state of mind. While on the way, the group stops at Sieshaup to change horses. Ludwig asks to see the postmistress, Frau Vogel. She brings him a glass of water and he says something to her. She never reveals these last words to anyone. June 13, 1886. At Berg, Ludwig seems cooperative and coherent. Dr. Gudin writes to the government that he has Ludwig well under control. The two men go out for a walk, and Dr. Gudin is so confident he dismisses the guards. When Ludwig and the doctor do not return after several hours, a search is undertaken. The bodies of the two men are found in the lake, drowned. Circumstances unknown. June 18, 1886, Ludwig's funeral procession marches through the streets of Munich, followed by enormous crowds of mourners. The service is held at a packed St. Michael's church. Lightning strikes the church during the service, but no one is harmed. Ludwig's body is entombed in the Wittelsbach crypt at St. Michael's. His heart is placed in an urn in the pilgrimage chapel at Altading in the Wittelsbach tradition. The urn is shown to the right. His heart is in an urn. How bizarre. June 18th, Ludwig's body. I have no idea what that says. Looks old though. That's the sleigh for my dream. Maybe Mrs. Smith will know what my dream meant. I have to ask someone. This thing is getting too weird. The Midnight Sleigh Rides Ludwig went on long sleigh rides in the middle of the night, particularly in his later years. It is said that he suffered from insomnia, headaches, and toothaches, and the rides soothed his restlessness. The sight of the king's grand sleigh speeding through the countryside of the Alps often startled the peasants and became a superstitious omen of ill fortune. I can see why, but what was he doing out there at night? December 14, 1881, Linderhof. Order another work by Jennings on the occult. Write urgently to Klug, saying that I insist that the stoppages by the bank cease. I want it, and therefore it must be done. Write very urgently. He must succeed at once, and then must report to me urgently. If I give orders to clear my room, doing so must not be postponed as it happened. Pencils must be pointed without special orders. The day after tomorrow, a thousand marks. How is Louis now? I want to know whether he looks unhappy. How often have I said that the coffee must not come up boiling hot, so that it can only be drunk after standing an hour? If any more correspondence come from Louis, they are to be burnt immediately, but I am to be informed of their arrival. 
These are actual notes from Ludwig to his servants. They go far in showing the king's state of mind. They were smuggled out and used as evidence in compiling the order for Ludwig's arrest. December 18, 1881, Linderhof. Every day get up earlier, for certain. See to that very particularly. Write it down. Remember that when the great friend arrives at Neuschwanstein, we retire to the hall. We are not to be disturbed. I will not tolerate interference or insubordination. Ludwig's death mask. Wow. I don't have anything to say to her at the moment. Ludwig is Ludwig, Grand Master of the Knights of St. George. There's got to be a connection between all this St. George stuff and Gabriel. Ludwig embarking on his sleigh. Maybe Mrs. Smith will know what my dream Elizabeth of Austria. Thank you.